Yirashimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this Saturday, we have Iro Hiro. A polarity changing shoot 'em up on the Switch. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. Jumping right in, we're given this intro cutscene, which we'll skip over, but the basic gist is these aliens uh, help, uh, helped awaken humanity's ability to generate power. Fast forward 100 years from that event, and humanity is being exploited for the ability to make power. Basically, they're being used as batteries, power plants, however you want to refer to it. So here, planet Earth is under attack by the Riwu, and our titular character, Iro is rushing to the power plant to save his mother. So, Iro Hiro is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up where we have the ability to change polarities. The polarities basically represent the aliens and humanity, so aliens are blue, humans are red, that sort of thing. But we can change between the two polarities. Here we are red, now we're blue. As red, we have the ability to destroy blue enemies and absorb red bullets. As blue, we can absorb blue bullets and shoot red enemies. Absorbing the bullets allows you to charge up special attacks, in this case the awesome Tesla Shock, which acts as a homing chain lightning. It's a really useful attack to have saved up, as it can get you out of a tight situation very easily. The game itself also has a combo system where if we destroy four enemies we start a chain which creates this little gravity well orb that will suck up little cores from the enemies and we can collect that for big points. There is another special attack in the game that I have not uh, unlocked uh, personally, but that's the gravity ignition which you'll get like later in the game, presumably. The game itself uses a life system. We have a total of three lives. If we take a direct hit from an enemy, or rather if we crash into an enemy, that will deal heavy damage and will lose a life. But if we're just taking shots of the opposite color from our ship, then we can take a total of two shots without dying, the third shot being fatal. So the game does give you the story on the sidebars when you're not receiving story, the sidebars display the number of enemies you've destroyed of certain types on the right, and then what level you're on as well as any power-ups you might have collected on the left. So there are ten different enemy types throughout the course of the game, a decent number for shoot 'em up Those small little fighters, though, man, I hate those. One of the easiest ways to lose a life is to actually crash into enemy ships, and those small little fighters usually dive bomb attack you, and it's <laughs> they it makes them very tricky and dangerous to deal with, especially if you're not the right polarity. So I'm fine with the polarities not dealing damage to the same color but it does make things a little bit tricky. We just picked up a power-up for our weapon for the first time. That's the double power-up, so it gives us basically a double shot. But, one really big beef I have with Iro Hiro and its power-up system is the power-up degrades over time. Even if we're not shooting, the power-up will run out. It'd be okay if there were more power-ups in the stage, but that's the only power-up that we're going to go and see in stage one. And as you might be noting, we just got to the boss and the power-up itself is about to run out. It just ran out there. We just went to our single shot and then we ran into the boss and died. So that's stage one. There are a total of nine stages throughout the course of the game. If you happened to lose lives during the stage, you do have the ability to buy them back at 4,000 points, so you're sacrificing score to get one-ups. And we'll go ahead and take that and jump to the next stage. So the second stage introduces more variety between the enemy forces, so we'll be alternating between red and blue enemies more frequently than we were in the first stage. 
There's also ground-based turrets that we have to watch out for, and one or two other mechanics that we'll talk to when we actually encounter them. So Irohiro, oh, here, here's one of those mechanics I was talking about. So there are these reflective surfaces where we can shoot our shots at and they'll bounce off in a 90 degree angle. You do have to be careful though, because those bounced shots, if you run into them with your own ship, it's possible for you to take damage. A little surprising that they would include that in the game itself. So here's what I'm talking about, those like fighters, if you don't happen to be the right polarity, they can really wreck your day. So this is basically what we have from Iro Hiro. So I've got a couple major beefs with the game itself, and so we'll get to talking about our minus and our plus flavors. So one of the minus flavors I have, as I mentioned earlier, is I really don't like the power-up system. So the power-ups are time-based, and in all the stages that I've played, you only receive a single power-up throughout the course of the game. In fact, in the third stage, you receive it at a point where there are no enemies. So even though you have an enhanced power for your shot, there is nothing to shoot. Especially with them being timed, I would have liked to have seen far more of those power-ups placed throughout the course of the stage as it's almost irrelevant for them to be there if they're not going to prove to be useful at all. Then my other primary minus flavor that I have to give the game is lack of continues. So if we use up all our lives, the game will ask us if we want to try again. But if you select yes, it takes you all the way back to stage one, regardless of where you happen to be at in the progression of the game. In my mind, this is a real deal breaker as the game itself is uses an old, almost an old school take on difficulty. Oh, real quick, here's our power up for the level. We've got the four way shot, which is neat, but once again, only receiving it like once per stage is pretty bad. So you have to learn and know the stages to a certain degree to be able to do well in the game. And always being reset back to the first stage every single time you happen to lose all your lives is really frustrating. And that's definitely makes for my biggest complaint of this particular title is just that the lack of continues really hurts the progression that you can go and make in the title itself. But the game itself does do some interesting and fun things with polarity, and that makes up some of the plus flavors. So the soundtrack is pretty decent. I do think they did a good job with that. Then we've got the polarity puzzles where, well, having to go and decide the best way to use the polarities to move through certain scenarios, particularly the third stage here, Outer Space, introduces these color zones where you can only move through them if you're that polarity. And uh, there are a few tricky obstacle-based dodging we have to go and do that like, uses that. I really like that kind of innovative uh, gameplay, and I really wish the game itself had some of the other flaws that it has taken care of. So as far as Yudo Hiro is concerned, I can't give it a strong recommendation, especially on a platform like the Switch which recently received Ikaruga just mere weeks ago. If you're looking for a polarity-based shooter to go and try out for the first time, definitely go and play Ikuruga. If you've played Ikuruga a ton and you love that kind of gameplay, then this one admittedly would be worth having a look at. Alright, well, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.